Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the Eredivisie and Ligue 1 over the past two weeks. I almost was about to postpone this video also for another week because we have two big clashes in each league coming up but ultimately decided maybe it's best to kind of take a look before all of this madness happens and then uh, review those potentially early next uh, week. So there, there you go. I also have have, have to say, well, um, let, how, how to say, collection-wise, I'm very much into these uh, leagues and I really would like to give them a whole lot more uh, attention than they usually do get uh, from the, uh, the mainstream media. No, I don't want to say, say mainstream media, but if you're uh, not living in one of these count, count, count coverage of these leagues, is uh, rather meager, although we have an Ajax team but that did great in the Champions League until they got eliminated by Benfica. And uh, when you watch them in the league, it actually the writing was a little bit on the wall there and I think with PSG you know it, it is the one team that everyone talks about with all the stars but also uh, ever since they got eliminated I think uh, people are rather rather um, lukewarm if not cold towards them and I have to say if it wasn't for if it wasn't for PSG uh, we would have a really really exciting league uh, 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 this season, but you know, no one is really talking about it uh, either that much. So yeah, uh, you always have to pick a little few highlights here and there. And then with other leagues being uh, more exciting, namely the Premier League and Serie A, my focus is actually there and also then the little thing that especially the Air Division is not always that easy to watch for me. But yeah, talking about it and let's see how much we'll talk talk about it. I actually want to start in the Eredivisie because I think uh, the previous weekend we got a little title decider. We might have seen the points that uh, dropped that actually will uh, see one team winning and the team is Ajax. I mean, uh, their performance at Groningen was already, it was uh, as much Ajax as it can be with three stoppage time goals. Uh, they were down through a Larson goal uh, and going into the 45th, uh, 45th minute or into stoppage time, they are still 1-0 down. And then within stoppage time, Klaassen gets the equalizer and then uh, a, a penalty. It was a very long stop, so a penalty, but Batadis turns turn, turn, turn around. And suddenly, while well, when you thought Ajax is going down with a 1-0 uh, deficit, they're going in with a 2-1 lead. Groningen tried their best. Just couldn't get it quite done. And in, in the end, it's another stoppage time to go through Berghuis that actually see Ajax uh, go uh, get that win and put actually a little bit pressure on PSV at this point. And, um, you know, it's a very curious situation because PSV is still in Europe, as is Feyenoord, while Ajax is out of Europe. So uh, not what you would expect in many ways. And maybe that also is a slight advantage potentially to Ajax. We don't know. Whatever it was, Coming back from the international break, and this is also an important uh, thing to con con consider, PSV did not look like themselves. And maybe they were already looking ahead to, to, to the Europa League, but after half an hour, they found themselves 3-0 down at 20. And it could have been even more because there was a, a handball uh, in the first goal that was already the fourth minute, but from Wolfswinkel, one of the most perfect names in the entire Eredivisie, scores 2 to 30 to 90, then Wispy the 25th. And I think everyone thought that 20 is going to win the winner game. Uh, Verman, uh, Geld, Geld, so back in the 3rd, the 35th, and Hakpo in the 53rd. Uh, and then very, very late in Stoppage and Poscali with uh, an equalizer. So uh, maybe silver lining there, but it was very, very, very tight up top. And now with this one, PSV dropped points where Ajax could extend the lead with stoppage time goals. It is just, it, it turns on little margins sometimes in many, many, many ways. Um, other than that, uh, Feyenoord win against Willem Dway. Uh, Willem Dway, really, really uh, team. I think they're celebrating, uh, not San Center, but I know 120 years because we know they have great jerseys. That season is going downhill. Uh, it, it's a little bit sad to see when you have such a great season per se. Maybe maybe, maybe this is a centenary. So if you have a centenary season and you're probably going, 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 going down. 
uh, not not good and another um, you know big boy clash in 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 a way AZ beating uh, Vitesse three uh, one although AZ had a so and so um, two weeks overall uh, meaning so that after this the uh, title chances are now uh, PS uh, you know ninety two percent Ajax a a percent PSV uh, it's more or less that I mean those four points. It will be really hard in six games for Ajax to lose those four, four points, I think. Uh, they are just too good for the rest of the league. By the way, another interesting thing is we have, uh, since I see here Sparta Rotterdam on the bottom, they more or less have the win against Vitesse. And this was the 92nd minute uh, when the game was abandoned. The game has to be finished. Go figure. I mean, honestly, this was just go show, 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 show up there for stoppage time. Seems to be a little bit nonsensical, but uh, whenever you see this, for me, Sparta Rotter has one more, uh, has three more points. So that makes the situation on the bottom a whole lot more difficult. And, uh, you know, technically the result is not in yet. Practically, it more or less is. So, yeah. So uh, then this past week, we can. Uh, Again, William Dway, uh, not sure why I'm pointing out, but go ahead, he has the Eagles uh, on, on, on a rare form. I think in the previous round they won at Zwolle. So uh, that's a team that is definitely on the, on the roll. But if you look again at, at um, big boys Ajax with a labored win against Sparta Rotterdam, and Sparta Rotterdam seemingly gives the top boys a little bit of trouble. Whereas PSV gets a 2 0 over Valwijk. Fair not them with the most convincing one, where I, where I said, uh, loses to Swole. So, um, upcoming round is then after Easter because the next, the next weekend has only one game. And. Uh, that's the cup final between Ajax and PSV, so that's a pretty big one. And, you know, uh, everything to me leads up to that cup final because uh, Ajax have already beaten twice PSV. This is not a time where they really could nail it in. Uh, the game is uh, over PSV finally could get something. I mean, I think they won the Super Cup or the uh, Johan Cruyff Schal. Um, against Ajax. So uh, interesting stuff there. Um, what's also interesting is playing the Kuyp in Rotterdam, Yeah, which I think uh, uh, Feyenoord fans will be extremely happy uh, about uh, that. Uh, in any case, if you look at the current standings, as I said, Ajax extending uh, their lead up there, uh, it is uh, the four points. Um, and I think there's a whole lot of movement in the Conference League playoffs, uh, which I think that's uh, an interesting side to see. Uh, and on the bottom, yeah, uh, it is what it is. It says Sparta has three more points. I don't think that Vitesse will get anything out of that in the last few minutes. Moving over to France, uh, which is, of course, always an exciting visit. But as, as, as I said, it's a little bit, uh, the air is out with PSG out and, and so on. But what has to be said that um, of all the teams, and I'm wearing them, Marseille seemingly is getting back on a roll. Because they have now, uh, last past weekend, a fourth win over saint Etienne. And all the other teams are kind of a little bit something. You had Nice and Rennes. This was kind of this big comeback match. And maybe this could decide who can challenge maybe for the second spot uh, and challenge Marseille. It ends in a 1-1. The Marseille win 2-4 uh, at saint Etienne. Uh, so a big one there. I saw actually a little bit of uh, Lyon's win against Angers, where I was so surprised that Tete, who was played for Schachter, could actually play for Lyon. Uh, seemingly, yeah. I mean, I know that Ukrainian players can could switch, and you could get some players, and uh, Lyon took care of that. The game was not good. Let's put it with that. Lyon is such a Jekyll and Hyde team. In the league, they are horrible, horrible. In Europe, they actually look uh, quite decent. And maybe this, this is where they put all their focus because that's their way in the Champions League. In the league, I think Lyon will have a hard time to even make the conference, to be honest. So uh, that's uh, one thing for sure. Uh, and then uh, PSG's win over Lorient was remarkable since this was the first time, the first time that all three superstars scored in the match. Something that you would have actually expected that by now should should happen at least four or five times. No, it was the first time now. Uh, funny story, Montpellier against Brest. I mean, it's a pretty big away day for Brest going all the way from the northwest down to the south. 
uh, I think it was a penalty for more Payet where uh, the Brest fans were behind the goal and showing the bottoms to the penalty taker. A scene to behold. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, you will you, you'll find. So after that round, uh, you know, lots of movement below. But uh, let, let's move to the past weekend where Lorient, uh, the team that had just been beaten 5-1 by PSG, um, also do Saint Etienne. They were 2-0 down. So an absolutely amazing game there that, of course, uh, whoever watched that one, not me. I took actually Friday evening more or less off from, 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 from watching. But yeah, 2-2, two, 2-2 two, 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 two down uh, and then uh, it all exploded. It was 2-2 two, two at half and it all exploded there. And uh, meaning at Lorient, I, I actually at the moment look kind of safe. I really thought there, there will be a team going down. No, nope, they made the turn, the, 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 the turn, turn around. Uh, Rennes. Again, I think that overall Rennes is probably the third best team in France, although Nice has uh, a claim there, but I think Rennes is a better team overall at, at its own, but also inconsistent. Get a 3 to win over Stade de Reims. And then PSG again, and hat trick by Mbappé, a hat trick by Neymar. Uh, yes, but it's all, it doesn't really matter at this moment anymore because the opposition that you're playing, uh, they are. I think they need to bring home this title to have at least some validity to this season. Uh, and maybe beat Marseille. Yes, I already said it. Marseille next weekend. Uh, that would be give a little bit of credence to what is happening at the moment. But I think the air is out. I mean, uh, the whole PSG thing has deflated. And let's see where where this will go. Uh, it looks all the Brest not Breton Derby, of course, uh, kind of not actually this uh, season uh, to the upper half, so no relegation re trouble. And Brest also keeping themselves in there. I re I ran because I have a work colleague from Brest, and when they got got a promotion, said yeah, it's pretty exciting that they they are up there. So yeah, uh, pretty, 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 pretty nice stuff there. Strasbourg, Lyon, 1-1. Lyon keep disappointing. As I said, they will not go any, anywhere. And on Marseille, uh, beat Montpellier 2-0. So um, with all that, we have an upcoming round. As I said, the big one is uh, PSG against Marseille. Uh, there's also Rennes against Monaco, which is a game that uh, probably, probably could be an interesting uh, one for sure. And I want to see what Lorient can do against Nice. Will they lose by a lot or will they win by a lot? That seemingly is the uh, time. What I haven't mentioned actually is that um, uh, Bordeaux actually also didn't, uh, didn't have all that bad of a run overall uh and i'm a little bit sorry they won three one against mets division which is bottom of table clash they got a point at lille so uh maybe there is hope for bordeaux but if i look at the standings they are 62 percent chance um, yeah it depends very much on where saint Etienne will go and then you know they have the little little playoff and clermont is also in but bordeaux maybe has some hope again maybe just maybe uh not 100 percent uh, there um, so yeah, that was it for me for uh, these two leagues. I, as I said, a little bit the air is out of these leagues, but I, I hope that the next weekend, the Dutch Cup Final plus uh, Le Classique, that is all about, uh, that's what, wherever it's all about. There will be a lot more excitement coming from there, and I'm really looking forward to both of these games that I probably would prefer uh, over watching, for instance, uh, or Lusk or whatever. So. Let's see where it goes. Also Easter week, weekend. So let's see how it will be. In any case, let, let me know what you thought about the happenings in these two leagues. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.